Hello everyone, hope you're having a nice day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's crazy video, we're going to talk about some bar rescue bars and give you an update on how they're doing. So without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Triple Nickel Tavern Throughout the list, we are going to make some comparisons as to how things were before and then move into how things are today. In the case of Triple Nickel Tavern, things were in a desperate need of change, especially with how horrible the owner was. Named JJ Gruder, he wasn't always a bad owner, with the bar being a hardcore success when it first opened, since they were the only rock and roll bar in town. Although things really took a drastic turn when Gruder experienced a series of traumatizing personal tragedies in his family. Soon after the bar opened, his sister and brother both passed from cancer, which pushed him into a very bad state. His friend Randy from high school, who worked as a bartender, noticed too that he began acting very differently. Rather than treating his bar like a business, it had turned into something more like a frat house, but more pathetic since the owners were old. Additionally, as a result of his poor mental state, he would often lash out verbally and physically on Randy, which was unacceptable to Taffer. Even worse, they didn't really do anything to change that their bar ostracized new customers, especially women, which is why they were 150 grand in debt. Admittedly, Gruder knew that he was at the end of the line and needed to start making his bar more woman-friendly and stop being so violent. Well, there's some very good news about the Triple Nickel Tavern, being that it's one bar rescue success story. To this day, it's open, alive, and thriving with 4 out of 5 star reviews on Yelp. And it's for good reason, since you can get a full meal with non-alcoholic drinks for $12 to $15. The only real complaint anyone has is that it's a small bar, but there's always great comments about the staff, which is awesome. Summit House Grill in a 2014 episode, we find out that Josh and Alexia Lubliner left their office jobs to open the Summit House Grill in Lakewood, Colorado. Much like the Triple Nickel Tavern, there was a great amount of success in the beginning, with them making 30 Gs every single week. With their confidence in the business, they decided to hire other people to run and manage it, only visiting a few times per week, which was their biggest mistake. Although the managers really didn't feel like the owners left them with the right tools to successfully do their job, this is what really made things go downhill. Josh didn't have any choice but to return to the bars since their team of managers did them more harm than good. To deal with the pressure, he began to drink on the job to ease the burden of what he was experiencing, which brought things to an even lower level of bad. This seemed to rub off on his employees too, who started to care less about their job and more about having a good time. All of this led them to having $750,000 in debt and truly put their marriage on the rocks, so things honestly really needed to change. Upon Taffer's arrival, he was faced with many challenges including the fact that the city prohibited the bars from changing their names and the front of their building. John was very unimpressed and even disgusted by how Josh would act around female customers being very disrespectful. After verbally attacking all of the employees for all their wrongdoings, they started to finally take things more seriously. You can say that the Summit Grill House was a success story but not a complete success at that. To this day, it seems like the bar has very recently closed down, but it was open to at least late of 2018. On the official Yelp page, a majority of the reviews were negative, mostly about the employees and the quality of food, and also apparently Josh reverted back to being a drunk, so it's no wonder that it closed down. State Pub A lot of bar owners on the show seem to have a dream about having one of their own, and failed miserably at managing it. Sean Al-Bawab seemed to be one of these people who wanted a bar for the longest time after being a bartender for 15 years. This was fulfilled when he was handed down the keys to a failing bar called State Pub along with a loan of $10,000. All he really needed to do is bring the bar back up on its feet and pay back the loan in time, which he couldn't accomplish at all. At first, he seemed to bring a lot of profit in for the business, which was quickly ruined when he turned the establishment into his own personal playground to drink ridiculous amounts of alcohol in. He could proudly state that he was never going to let his customers see him sober, which already shows how bad of an owner he is. To make matters worse, he never paid for any of the alcohol he would drink and the $10,000 loan he received. Al-Bawab would also drunkenly drive off customers by insulting them, which resulted in a lot of conflict and lost money. With his lease unpaid for for about a year, the landlord had enough and gave him 5 weeks to pay for everything he owed or he would shut things down, which is where Taffer came in. Taffer and his experts had a collection of things to change from the horrible health code violations to the menu, the interior and exterior, as well as most importantly, the staff's professionalism. After all these things were changed with success, it was time to open back up to the public and have Sean's dream finally come true. In the beginning, the business, renamed to Downstairs Bar and Kitchen, received glowing reviews with people praising them for their laid-back atmosphere and the selection of beers and food. However, it seemed like the owner's ways just reverted back to how he originally was and it closed down sometime in 2017. Brickhouse Bar and Grill 
For one Season 5 episode, we meet the owner of the Brick House Bar and Grill, who is an army veteran named John Nichols. Getting married in 2010 between deployments and having a child with his wife, things didn't end up going the way they planned and they ended up getting divorced. Several tours later in 2014, he came back and bought the Brick House in hopes that the investment would breathe some new life into his crappy situation. Though he didn't realize how much effort and work it would be to run a bar and it was more than he could really handle. Since the previous owner made it into a biker bar, it didn't have the greatest reputation which was hard for Nichols to turn around. The main issue other than his inability to keep the business afloat is his inappropriate interactions with the people around him. For one, he hooks up with his bartender Rita and also flirts with other female customers right in front of her which causes a lot of tension. Apparently Rita admits that Nichols can sometimes be a good guy but other times he can be super inconsiderate and rude. Other than the tensions, there's also a subpar equipment that the staff is forced into using, which causes a lot of inconsistency. Only one POS system and speed well work, and the beer cooler is broken, meaning it's hard to make the beer come out cold, which puts a lot of pressure on Rita the bartender. Being $300,000 in debt, John and his crew needed a miracle, which is where the bar rescue host came in to save the day. Seeing how the bar had a lot of potential, Taffer changed the name from Brick House to the Garrison Tavern. Many changes were done to the interior and it seems like it's still open to this day but Nichols is no longer the owner. Maybe that's why it has such high reviews. Sam Jordans Famously known, the Sam Jordans bar opened up in 1959 by famed boxer and civil rights activist Sam Jordan. It was very active in the community with people coming far and wide simply to visit Jordans landmark bar. During the bar's lifetime it gained decades of success with all kinds of people from different races, occupations and more coming together. What drew people the most was not only the welcoming atmosphere, but the amazing barbecue and soul food. However, just like any other person, as you get older, your health will start to decline, and the time to pass on your valuables to your loved ones will come. Jordan left the bar to both of his children, Ruth and Alan, who had little to no experience with running a business. Ruth was sure that she wanted to keep the bar in the family and that they had a legacy to live up to, but both had no idea what to do. Working under the same roof, the brother and sister pair couldn't see eye to eye, which caused a lot of issues. While Ruth had the drive to make her father's business live on, Alan was rather lazy and dismissive. A lack of communication and teamwork resulted in them amassing a $500,000 debt, which shows how badly they needed someone's guidance. Once Taffer came in, he noticed that the bar looked like it hadn't been painted in ages and it lacked a lot of its original character, which was driving customers away. Come to today and the business is flourishing and is very much open due to the renovations and improvements to the siblings' communication. Sam Jordan's has to have one of the highest reviews from a bar rescue so far, with it getting a 4 star rating on Yelp and a 4.5 on Facebook. People are not only satisfied with the food, but the atmosphere, which explains why the parking lot is often so packed. Well, that will sadly be all for today's video here on the channel. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.